Hi, I'm Hannah Kane. I'm state rep for Shrewsbury and Westboro, and I am here today to read you the story of Rodney the Reindeer and the Holiday Hatastrophe. Tickety talk, tickety talk. The hands of the countdown clock were slowly and steadily winding down, and all around the North Pole, everyone was doing something or going somewhere. There was so much work to do. It was the hurriest, flurriest time of the year, and no one was more excited about it than Rodney. He skipped hop through the sparkling snow all the way to Santa's garage. How's the sleigh, Santa? asked Rodney. Do you need any help waxing it, shining it, washing it, drying it? We're just about done, Rodney. All I've got to do now is take it out for a little test drive, said Santa. Say, would you like to? But before Santa could even twitch a whisker, Rodney was sitting in the passenger seat with a shiny red sleigh, ready to ride. Yahoo, shouted Rodney as they zipped and zoomed over the North Pole. Can you do any tricks, he asked Santa. Nothing fancy this time, said Santa. Just a quick flight check. Oh, come on, Santa, pleaded Rodney. Couldn't we just do one litty loop-de-loop, -loop, please? Well, OK, Rodney, Santa said with a grin, but just one. The wind swirled about Rodney's antlers as the sleigh climbed higher and higher. And as he hung upside down, a tickle of excitement danced around in his belly. All he could see was sky. And then, a quick flash of red. Santa's hat! It blew right off his head and twirled away, and away, and away. Santa, what are we going to do? Rodney gasped. I don't see it anywhere. We've got to find that hat, Santa said nervously. It's the only hat I've ever worn on Christmas Eve. Mrs. Claus made it just for me, and my head gets so chilly. I'm sorry, Santa said Rodney in a small voice. Boy, did he feel terrible. None of this would have happened if he hadn't begged Santa for all that fancy flying. By Christmas Eve morning, the news had spread all across the North Pole. Search teams had come up empty handed Gloom blanketed what had always been the most magical day of the year, and no one had ever seen Santa so unjolly. Rodney sat in the square and looked around the sad little town, and he thought, and he thought some more, and then he had an idea. Santa, Rodney, any word? Rhonda asked hopefully. Has anyone found it? Not yet, said Rodney, but I think you can help. Rhonda nodded as Rodney explained his plan. In no time at all, the elves were rushing to and fro with hat boxes of all shapes and sizes, trying desperately to help Santa find a hat that he liked. He tried them all. The chef hat, the clown hat, the cowboy and crown hats, hats for sailing, hats for siestas, hats made of fruit, and hats for fiestas. Oh, who am I kidding, Santa sighed. Can you imagine me shimmying down the chimney in this fruit hat? It's no use. I could never replace my old hat. Everyone in the shop got very silent. It's hopeless. Simply ho, 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 hopeless. It was clear to Rodney his idea wasn't going to work. He just had to go find that hat. So he combed through the powdery dress they'd flown over just a few days before. In hours and hours of searching, he glanced over the horizon where suddenly the sun was starting to set. And what? Suddenly? Could it be? He thought he saw it. So he set off over the biggest hill in town for the chilliest place in the North and South Poles combined, Snowman's Land. And it was Santa's hat on top of the scariest, scalliest, grouchiest, growliest snowman Rodney had ever seen, Mr. Blizzard, an eyeful of frightful, and he towered over Rodney like an avalanche. Uh, excuse me, stuttered Rodney, I see you f found Santa's hat. Lost? This hat's not lost at all, bellowed Mr. Blizzard. Why, it was delivered to my door only yesterday. By airmail, in fact, and just in time for Christmas. Rodney wanted that hat so badly, but he didn't know what to do. Now go on home, grumbled Mr. Blizzard, before I lose my cool. So Rodney went back to Rhonda's hat shop. In fact, he ran there, never looking back, not even once. Santa, Santa, he called. I found your hat, but the surliest, burliest old snowman found it first. Hmm, I think I know just the snowman you're talking about, said Santa. And from inside his fuzzy coat pocket, he pulled out a long yellow scroll. Rodney knew he'd seen that before. It was the official list, the one of good boys and girls all around the world. Huh, 
Just as I thought, said Santa with a smile. Mr. Blizzard, one winter hat. Rhonda shuffled through the back room and emerged with a beautiful cap in the merriest shade of green. I've been saving this one for a special occasion, she said. And just to make it extra special, Mrs. Claus expertly knitted a big red B on the front. She and Rhonda and several elves helped wrap it all up with shiny paper and curly ribbon in the fanciest hat box they could find. Okay, Rodney called Santa, time for our first delivery. Who's there? What's all that racket? Who dares disturb? Mr. Blizzard was lost for words when he turned and saw Santa Claus, the Santa Claus, at his door. A present for you, Mr. B. Merry Christmas. A present? But I didn't, uh, I wasn't, uh, I haven't been very good this year, stammered Mr. Blizzard. Oh, don't be silly, said Santa. Everyone deserves a do-over. Open it, open it, Rodney cheered. And as he peeled away the wrap, Mr. Blizzard could hardly believe his eyes. It was exactly what he wanted. Mr. Blizzard placed the hat on his head and tied the strings. He handed the red hat with a furry trim back to Santa. Santa handed his cap to Rodney. And they all hiked back to town together through the twirling, swirling snow without feeling the slightest breeze. They made it back just in time for takeoff. Santa puckered his cherry nose, his cheeks started to get a little rosy, and his belly even shook a bit as he laughed. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. And as Santa flew up, 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 and out of sight, he was as jolly as ever. The end.